Through the first four games of the 1991 season, the Detroit Turbos have absolutely flattened the league with an explosive offense. They have six of the league's top ten scorers. Throughout the five-year history of the league, the New York Saints have had a reputation for tough defense. Tonight, they put that defensive reputation on the line against the Twin Turbos. Network presents exclusive coverage of the major indoor lacrosse league. Tonight, from Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, it's the visiting New York Saints against the undefeated Detroit Turbos. And undefeated they are through the offensive talents of this twin turbo combination. Paul Gate right here with the most goals in the league and twin brother Gary Gate, 15 goals, 20 assists, leads the league with points these two guys are pretty much unstoppable so far. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Felsmo along with Bruce Todman. And, Bruce, we've seen them now. They're 4-0 into the league. They look very tough. They're awesome. I mean, the Motown juggernaut continues to hammer its way through the defenses of the major indoor lacrosse league. You mentioned they've got six players in the top ten. They're averaging 20 goals per game. I hope the Saints are as religious as their nickname because uh, mere mortal men have not been able to stop the turbos yet. Well, we also talked about in the history of the league, New York has really had a good reputation for defense. They'll be tested tonight, but they've got to have offense to match that defense. Who do they look for on the offensive end of the field? Well, they've got Dan Borges and uh, Jeff Nicholas, who lead their offensive team. They've been joined by some exciting newcomers, Gordon Purdy from Australia, and uh, the soccerist John uh, Reese from Yale. All-American, great player from Yale, was in the national championship uh, play last year. Also on the Detroit team, we talk about the twin turbos so much, they've got a lot of guys that can score beyond the twin gates. Well, as we said, six guys in the top ten. They're firing on six cylinders at least. All right, it'll be a tough offense to stop, but New York will give it a try. Bruce and I will be back with the opening face-off when we return. Tonight's game is brought to you by Coors Light. No slowing down with the Silver Bullet. By U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. By STX. Revolutionize your game with STX lacrosse equipment. And by Winless, the official warm-up of the major indoor lacrosse league. Welcome back to Prime Network's exclusive coverage of the major indoor lacrosse league. The New York Saints with the best defense in the league against the Detroit Turbos. They are 4-0. An explosive offense. Nobody can stop them. Look at these numbers. 87 goals scored, 22 per game, 195 total. And look at the top three scorers in the league, all from Detroit. Paul and Gary Gate, identical twins. Peter Park, a major target on the crease at about six foot five. Vinny Pfeiffer will start in the goal for New York. He is the one charged with the duty of stopping that great offensive Detroit. He has his own thoughts on how he'll do it. I anticipate seeing a lot of shots, uh, more so than any other contest. I think they've outshot most of their other opponents. And I think that uh, you know, they drive through two and three people and still get a shot off, uh, which makes them the 4-0 team that they are right now. Uh, I anticipate uh, it's going to be a long, tough game, and endurance is going to be a key. And the opening faceoff goes to Detroit. You heard the thoughts of Vinny Pfeiffer. Played in Baltimore, the University of Baltimore, a tremendously fit goalie. This team, Bruce Todman, played last night against Pittsburgh. It was a physical game. They lost in the closing minutes of that game, 16-14. Sal Lacasio went the whole way. Vinny is fresh. And here's the lineup. Crowley, Cook, Reese, the great All-American from Yale, Nicholas uh, McKinley, and Pfeiffer, as we talked about, in the goal. For the Turbos, Rive, the Gate brothers, Lee Lemon uh, from Canada, and Sawicki. This is the same lineup that started the very first game this year. So, Bruce, he's got a lineup he likes. Of course, at 4-0, he sticks with it. That's right, and right off the bat, uh, the Sockless Wonder drew a two-minute penalty for a high sticking on Paul. So the Turbos have got the power play lead. Sockless Wonder being John Reese. He plays in the, uh, in the mold of Mike Tyson. There's a trailing player on this fast break. Man down, they take a shot on Ted Sawicki. And New York puts good pressure on 
this is unusual that they would be man down this early. This could be one statistical advantage. It is the only statistical advantage they have over Detroit in that they don't foul as much. They should have better and more frequent extra man opportunities. Not the case, though. They start off down one man. Look at these saves by Pfeiffer. Vinny Pfeiffer comes up big. Pressure here, though. Peter Parr comes in. Look at six foot five. He is huge. Back out to Gary Gate. You don't want to play him too tightly. Behind the back, but picked off by New York. Very smart team that looks for that behind the back feed. And they picked it up right there. Now coming down, trying to get their offense going. Jim Bovich made the steal all the way down. Takes a shot on Sawicki. Good heads up defense. And now we're trying to get some fresh legs on defense, Bruce. Yeah, they're changing now. They're short, of course. Reese still in the penalty box. And defense is certainly the key. They've got to shut down the turbos. They've got to slow the whole thing down a little bit. They're not going to do it if they continue to take penalties, though. Well, Coach Tom Flatley, I'm sure, really disgusted that they are behind as far as men. They're down by one, five on four here in the first two minutes. And if they could just stave off the next 35 seconds, they'll have done the job. Gate in close, no contest. Huff left him alone, and Paul Gate was parked on the backside of Benny Pfeiffer. You can say goodbye to that ball. As soon as it went into Paul Gate's stick, you know he put it in the hole. one nothing Detroit. They're fighting in the corner. There's Park taking his man. It looked like Goldberg got it out in front, and Paul took his time. He had lots of time. Put it in the far side. You see Huff there left him, was caving in on the uh, ball side a little bit too much, left him wide open. Let's take a look at the league standings in the American Division. Baltimore, Philadelphia, look at New York, one and three. They are in trouble. They need to win and need to win badly. Well, goals have been their problem, obviously, so they've got to get on the scoreboard regardless of how they do at their end of the rink. Please. Disappointing loss last night in Pittsburgh. They are up, and Pittsburgh scored five goals late in the game. Shot in close, and Sawicki has had pressure early on, but you talked about the goal-scoring drought, and that's what this team needs. Uh, they're getting some shots early. They need to put it in the hole. Here's Nicholas with a hard shot that Sawicki saves fairly easily. Nicholas again, fake, fake, another shoulder save. Jeff Nicholas, the great All-American from Virginia. New York doing a good job of controlling it. Close again, one fake, but then the defense knocks it out. Two-minute penalty, I think, in the head they're calling here. Look out. I think they're going to get some time. Let's take a moment to look at the national standings. Detroit 4-0. They really are commanding the attention in this league. Pittsburgh, what most people thought was the team. They were the team that we thought had the best shot at them. New England last year's regular season winner. They are 1-3, and three, so it looks like Detroit is well on their way to being the national division finalist. And New York still has a good chance of getting in that, it's a dogfight in the American League. The American division, rather. 1-0, you can see Detroit leads early on. They had the power play, and it ended up being just too much for New York. Number two, Monty Jacks. After all of that guffawing back and forth in front of each other, the Turbos uh, took a two-minute penalty. Jacques Monty sitting it out. Well, you said his name like a real American. The Canadian Cannon. Bruce Todd in the area he knows these Canadian players and they know the box game very well. New York, we talked about the advantage, Bruce. This is where they really can get it. They've got to make these extra man opportunities pay off. If you look at the plus minus differential, on average, Detroit spends 30 minutes in the box. New York spends about 10. That means they've got an advantage of 20 minutes that so they're going to have five on four. They've got to make those turn into goals. You're right. That's a very interesting stat. If they can take advantage of it, they'll be in this game. So one minute still left on Monty's penalty. So New York now reloads. It'll be Nicholas up top triggering the offense. He comes all the way in uncontested, and the ball bounces out wide. Still in control for New York. They can't get a real testing shot. Gorgeous down there low. Has tested Sawicki, but really not giving him that Big fake that you need to move Ted Sawicki from pipe to pipe. Nicholas again. The Saints are looking awfully aggressive on the loose balls, Lee. Saints are doing a good job on the loose balls. Jeff Goldberg ragging him, and there's another save by Ted Sawicki. Goldberg, number four on Detroit. Interesting story because he played the last several years on the New York team. In close on the crease, and another save by Ted Sawicki. Boy, did he luck out a little bit of help from the pipe. Yeah, right off the pipe, that one. Here comes Paul Gate. He's looking for help. The defense drops in and just shields him with the body. I think that's an excellent way to play defense on these Gate brothers. Just lock him up with the body. Forget the stick. Give him the shot. Just don't surrender your body position. 
with the score one to nothing and 10 minutes left in the first period. We'll take a short break. Stay with us. Ball gate with a rocket shot. Vinny Pfeiffer gobbles it up. Pfeiffer has looked sharp as attack except for that one goal, which really wasn't his fault. It was a power play situation. They got the ball to the backside, and Paul Gate had all the time in the world to pick his spot against Vinny Pfeiffer. Again, New York, even up now. Lee Fells going Bruce Todman. Cook goes behind the goal, looking for help out front. This is Ed Cook. Ball comes all the way down. Tom Towers trying to dig it out. Towers, Nike, not that fast. Finally gets a little pressure, but comes up with the ball nicely. Rocket shot from outside, and that was because the shot clock was down to one second. They lose possession. You've got 40 seconds to get the ball on the net. That and, keeps uh, things moving pretty fast in the major indoor lacrosse league. A shot every 40 seconds. First look at the transition, Detroit off and running. They really have turned into a great transition team this year. They're down the floor with 30 seconds left in the shot clock. Shot by Terry Martinello from out front. Whistle and another New York player going into the box. And this is very unusual, uncharacteristic of the team. Maybe it shows the aggressive nature that they're putting into this. That's Gordon Purdy. And uh, we'll have a chance to meet Gordon Purdy. He's from Australia at halftime today, uh, time permitting. Now we'll get to see the vaunted turbo power play in action here. This looks like their second unit leap. Jeff Goldberg at the top. Well, the gates were out there for a long time, so you got Doddridge off to the goalie's left. He has the ball now. That's Doddridge. Goldberg directed from up front. Gets it all the way into Rodriguez and Goldberg, the player that was traded to the Detroit Turbos from the New York Saints, found his man right on the crease and Armando Rodriguez. Rodriguez does a little dance after he scores in front. I'm not sure whether he scored it. Well, I know he scored it, but I think he may have just tipped it in. Here's the shot from Goldberg. Yeah, it hit his stick. He sort of directed it in. They're playing the diamond, you notice, Lee. all the way, and then he just goes and boom, redirects it, baby, and just gets enough of it past Pfeiffer. I think he put a sort of a knuckler on it. He certainly made a motion towards the net. New York was setting up in a diamond on that short man play, which eliminates the shooter at the top and forces you to go to the, to the crease, which they did with effectiveness right there. Of course, oh, my gosh, right off the faceoff. Here comes the turbos. Ronnie Martinello, one of the leading scorers for this team last year, comes up big. They can hurt you in so many ways. First, they put their second power play unit out there, and they score a goal in about five seconds. And now right off the faceoff, they get the ball up to Martinello. Ron Martinello led the team last year, as we take a look at him, from Windsor, Ontario. He was one of the leading scorers last year. He's a second-team All-Pro in this league, but he has really been watching the offensive show put on by the gates. 3-0 Detroit leads now early on. We're only about six minutes into the first period of play. The Saints have not been playing badly. They've had some bad luck in the early going. This is John Reese, the All-American from Yale, the midfielder of the year in the NCAA Division I last year. Another hard shot from out front. And that one goes in, and the route may be on very early. Jacques Monte, who spent some time in the penalty box, comes out and takes that from the upper right. Vinnie Pfeiffer getting tremendous pressure. Monte scores goal number four, four nothing Saints. And I would suggest that Bob Engelke would call a timeout as he has done Gets Vinny Pfeiffer a chance to rest, and here's the shot by Monty. Well, this looks like a familiar pattern. The turbos are isolating Jacques Monty on that side, one-on-one. -on -one. They are going to take that outside shot until the goaltender proves that he can stop it. And also, it looks like they're really sagging in to help out, which is dangerous against Detroit. Bovich came all the way across the front and left the backside open. A team that can handle the ball as well as this team can, as we look at Monty, really can kill you by moving the ball. We'll be back with our first quarter. The Turbos are off to a 4-0 lead against the Saints. Major indoor lacrosse players know all the right moves. When you're on the move, score with your official Major Indoor Lacrosse League MasterCard. Accepted at over 6.3 million locations. Get instant cash from participating Cirrus ATMs. Enjoy 24-hour customer service. And choose your favorite team's logo. Contact 1-800-847-7378 to apply. This unique MasterCard is scoring with fans already. Call 1-800-847-7378 and make a hit. We rejoin the action in the first quarter, 449 left, a critical juncture of this game. 
five to one. Each team has scored. Paul Gates scored a second goal of the game for the Turbos. Gordon Purdy, the first for the New York Saints. It's an extra man for New York, but Detroit controls the ball. Look at Gary coming down, finding Park. He's dangerous, and he scores. A chance for the Saints to come back into the game and get down by three. The Turbos put it right back in their face. Now it's six to one, Detroit. The Turbos are dangerous when they've got the ball, when they don't have the ball, when they're odd men, and even when they're short men. Watch this pass from Gary over to Park. He, he turns, swivels, uses the shooter, uses the defensive man as a screen, and shoots a low shot, bounce shot right off the ground. Watch him spin around, use the defender as a screen, bang, it's in the net. I think it actually went in off one of the Saints who was coming back, Don Borges, who looked like he was standing on the goalie's toes. May have gone in off him. Gorgeous was backing up his goalie, just like you see the field game. 6-1, 5-0 lead. It was an excellent chance for the Saints to come back into this game. 5-1, extra man situation. They took a very weak shot early on in that power play. Lost possession, never got it back. They still have one minute left, but they've got to get the ball. Gary Gate comes in, one fake to the wing, right by Vinnie Pfeiffer, and Vinnie Pfeiffer is getting no help defensively. The defense right there applied by number four, Bobby Cook, but Gary did that little fake to the off pipe. There was really nobody there, and put it right over the shoulder of Vinnie Pfeiffer. It's tough for one man to check Gary Gate, or either of the Gates. Here, two, three men. Here's the fourth one coming in. Four men had a kick at him. He still got a clear shot watch, on the net. Watch the blind fake. He fakes it blindly to a wingman, and right. there was nobody there just to keep the goalie honest, to keep the goalie to the right, and then puts it right back in behind his shoulder. That is moved by Gary Gate. Vinny, Seven to one. Vinny is seeing a lot of rubber early, and I like the looks of him. He hasn't let in a lot of bad goals. They've been standing on his toes and putting them in. Well, this is the way that most teams have played the turbos on the first time around. You play yep. them aggressively, you think you're going to beat them with the ball, and they kill you in transition. Jeff Goldberg gets the ball back for Detroit. Just totally typical. There's their transition game. They've got 40 seconds on the clock, and they've got the ball into the opposition end within five seconds. So Detroit putting on a clinic. Here's Paul coming in, looking for a hat trick early. Doesn't get it. Another fine save by Vinnie Pfeiffer. There's the New York transition game. They one, really need a finisher. One man. Yep. This is Purdy. The Australian player played at Adelphi in the States. He can wheel and turn here. Double team. Somebody's going to be wide open. Backside tries to get it to Bobby Cook. And Bobby Cook doesn't get it. It'll go to Detroit. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Hi, I'm Gary Gate. And I'm Paul Gate, members of the Detroit Turbos. The players of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League have teamed up with the Leukemia Society of America to fight this terrible disease. You can help us help kids with leukemia by call here by ordering your official 1991 calendar. For $5 plus postage and handling, you can help the society. Order your calendar by calling the Leukemia Society today. See you at the game. See you at the game. Well, a new penalty has given New York another chance to score. They're, they're down by six goals, seven to one. We're still in the first period of play as our Prime Network exclusive coverage the Major Indoor Lacrosse League continues. Ted Sawicki, ball loose, and picked up nicely by Gary Gates. Sawicki did not know where it was. And look at Paul. Bruce, he's all the way down the field looking for that fast break. The last time the Saints drew a penalty, the Turbos got two goals. Taking long shots like that is the kind of thing that results in breakaways at the other end. They've got to get the ball in closer. Mike Cummings, rocket shot from outside. Now Gary looks for his brother. He finds him. Here comes Paul. Watch him fake to the backside. Here he comes over. It'll be tough to stop him. One-handed shot and a goal. Here's a natural left-hander taking a right-handed one-arm shot. These guys don't know what it is to be in position not to shoot. They can shoot from any angle, any spot. Well, being Canadian box players, they don't switch hands as much as the Americans do. But when they do, they can do it with one hand. He does so there, throws the ball, the stick into his right hand, and with one hand, it bounces it into the net. Phenomenal athletic skill involved in doing that, friends. Eight to one. The face off now, if you look at Paul Gate. Tremendous All-American from Syracuse, identical twin, Paul and Gary, and these guys are one and two. They're threatening to rewrite the record books. They have a chance, Paul Gate or Gary has a chance to have the all-time, the league's now entering the fifth year. They can set the career scoring record in one year. That's how good they are. Cummings, hard shot, finds the mark and beats Sawicki over the right shoulder. 
Good goal, 8-2, to two, the second goal for the Saints. Well, Mike Cummings taking a good hard shot from the top of the point. But, Leaf, that's still a long shot. You're not going to score 15 goals like that on Sawicki in a given night. Here's the shot again. Nine out of ten times he, he eats that shot up. The Saints have got to get the ball in closer. And I hope they're not you know, going to get excited about scoring from out there and keep trying because he'll play catch with them for the next half hour. It's a tough shot, as you said. You have to hit it exactly right. It has to have as much velocity as you can get and hit the corner exactly right. Here's John Reese facing off against Monty. John Reese, sensational player. No, it's not Reese this time. It's Borges. Reese was facing off early. That's Borges facing off that time. And Borges is an offensive star who's favoring a little bit of an injury. You're not seeing him on offense as much as New York would like. That certainly hurts them a lot. If you know, he's one of their top shooters. He loves to lay the body out and really extend himself when he plays around the crease. Good fake in close, moving in. That's Gordon Purdy, who is looked to be one of the offensive stars of New York squad. That He scored the hat trick last night in a losing effort against Pittsburgh. He threw a nice face dodge on Peter Park, but as he was going around him, he jabbed him with a stick. Park is, uh, as we know, six foot five and about 220. When he puts his stick out in front of him, he's got quite, uh, quite the leverage and quite the reach. You don't get much of a chance. You get one or two quick decisions to make in a matter of seconds. As we look at the There's box, Park. Park getting into uh, Doddridge territory. Uh, Neil Doddridge leads the league for the Detroit Turbos, and we kid him a little bit about it. That's, uh, he's got his own little cushions in there. He has a TV set up. He puts a lot of minutes in down there, so he's lent that room right now to Pete Park. Vito Martinello, what a year he's had. Coming through a one seven season. And Bruce, if two guys could ever turn your program around, he got the right two. I guess he did. He had a pretty nice draft, didn't he? He's looking at coach of the year at this point. Let's take a look at our Prime Network continuing coverage, exclusive coverage of Major Indoor Lacrosse League. Next week, these same turbos that are electrifying the league go against the Philadelphia Wings, and the Wings are the defending champions. Now, that will be a very emotional game at Philadelphia where they have over 8,000 season ticket holders. You can expect that to be sold out, 17,000 plus, and a lot of emotion on the field next week in Philadelphia. There should be some rocking and rolling going on down in the spectrum. John Please. Phillips, uh, this is John Phillips. Bob Engelke is one of the coaches, but this is John Phillips, an assistant coach who was just inducted into the Long Island Hall of Fame for lacrosse last week. We congratulate him for that. Now look how far out the Saints have this power play going. Now they've got a man in the middle, at least. Coming to that hard shot, he tried to get and sneak it past. You know who has the best hard shot from that spot in no. the business? It's John Reese. And he made, uh, he scored a single season record as a midfielder when he played for Yale last week, last year rather. And we haven't seen it yet. Here's Sawicki save right now from the outside. But Reese, that's the kind of shot that he made famous in the field game has not really come into any kind of effective offense in the box here. He only has one goal and 15 shots coming into tonight's game. Cummings now works behind. And Bruce, you really get the feeling that nobody on that New York team can take it down the cylinder and really put pressure on Sawicki. Well, they run a man through the middle. There he goes now, but they can't get the ball to him. Jeff Nicholas occupying some. And look at this transition. Gary and Paul. That's Gary to Paul. One fake and a shot. Great save by the goalie, Vinnie Pfeiffer. 33 seconds left. Two Six on one. Lead. They'd love to get one here, less than half a minute. Faking a shot and a score. Tremendously placed off the back shoulder. And a good goal, well-timed. Tim McEntee from CW Post, eight to three. So three goals. Actually, the last six goals scored, it's 3-3, New York and Turbos, and that's what the coaches will be focusing on. Look at that fake. That's the fake that made the shot. That froze the defender, who had to stay between the two men, and gave him the opening to take that final shot. Nice fake. Very nice fake. So they're staying with it. Monty now facing off with Borges again. Borges on the faceoff. Again, an offensive star that we haven't seen here. This would be a killer. Blocked out at the last moment. 15 seconds left. You don't want to give one up here, obviously. And New York now pushes up on the offense. They've got time to shoot. 10 seconds. They've got to move it quickly. Hard shot goes wide of Sawicki. This quarter is going to end. They can't feed it into crease. And there was a chance for a goal, but didn't get one. Bobich couldn't handle it. A five-goal difference. New York Saints are coming back and getting into the offense. Stay with us.
All set for the second quarter here from Joe Lewis Arena. Lee Bellsmo and Bruce Todman. The first quarter, as you might expect, all Detroit, 8-3. to three. But of the last six goals, Bruce, and this is what I'm sure the coaching staff of the Saints were focusing on the last six goals. It was three for the Saints, three for the Detroit Turbos. The Saints have had some good motion on offense. They've got to take care of their own end. They've had three short men scored on. They've, they've been scored on three times when they've had the odd man. So we talked about that being a, a potential advantage for New York, and it's really worked the other way. It has so they, far. If they can straighten that out, they'll be in good shape. And there's Nicholas with a score. Hang on to your seats and your tickets, folks, because it's 8-4, to four, now a four-goal separation. That was a nice little spin around or move by Jeff Nicholas. He's somebody that the Saints look to to, uh, to pull their scoring out every week, week after week. University of Virginia grad, Brown shot, using again, as Park had done earlier, used the defender as a partial screen. He turned around, threw the ball around the defender, and passed Tetsuwiki, who didn't move until it was already by him. John Reese was in for New York in that faceoff. All alone out front is Pratt, and that is maybe the Achilles heel for the defense so far. Bruce, they seem to be sliding to the ball with too much aggression, and they leave the backside open. There's something with the Detroit team that's always open on the weak side, and that has been hurting them as much as anything so far. That's right. They've been a little too aggressive. You're absolutely right. And that's just what the Turbos wait for. Go ahead, double-team me, and I'll find the guy who's open. Two passes, and you've got a one-on-none or a two-on-one. Here goes New York now trying to make the lead three, which would be a tremendous comeback early on in this game. We're in the second quarter. First five goals of the game were scored by Detroit. Since then, it's four to three with the Saints. Four goals back. Ronnie Martinello calms things down as the gate identical twins come back onto the field. Now let's see how they match up in a set offense and play defense on these guys. Coming all around is Gary. Gary wheels around the crease, tries to one-arm it in. We've seen from Paul that they can do that with strength. Rebay with a hard shot, picked up by Vinny Pfeiffer, and here's a fast break possibility. The trailing player all the way over. Bovich can't get the ball, and that's been another problem by New York, not picking up the ball in close quarters. That's the kind of transition game they have to get into, but uh, you've got to catch the ball. Well, this is a one chance out of 10 that it won't go in, <laughs> and he did miss it. The behind the back wrap shot. That was Paul Gate. Sensational shot. Most players would not be able to even attempt it. Full run around the back. New York also stepping up the tempo. We're two minutes into the second quarter, and they're going for it. Paul Gate again, and swallowed up Vinny Pfeiffer all over it. Forget the, forget the 40 second shot clock. We've got a 10 second shot clock running here. They're just whipping up and down the floor. It's like the 100 meter dash up and down the floor. Vinny Pfeiffer would rather have that shot come early. He's had the benefit of that early shot the last two times down the floor. It's a delayed penalty on the turbos and uh, the goalie Pfeiffer has left for the extra man. The Saints have an extra man on the floor now. As long as they maintain possession, they'll get a chance to go ahead and capitalize on it. There again, they're a little reluctant to play clean catch and throw. Another hard shot from out front. Cummings taking that rocket shot that's good in the field game and very ineffective in the box game. Bruce Todman moans when he sees that shot come out. It's just not that effective. Eight to four the score, but now they'll have a chance to go back on the power play. They might be a little bit wary now because, again, they've scored twice. They, being the Turbos, have scored twice when they were a man down. I moan, and Ted Sawicki just smiles when he sees him shoot from out there. Here's a telling stat for the Saints. They're the only team in the Major Indoor Lacrosse League that has more goals than assists. What does that mean? That means they're too many individual efforts and not enough passing plays. Goals, they stack up pretty well as far as league stats, team goals, that is. And you're right, the assists just take it right down to the bottom of the league in scoring per game when you add up goals and assists. Now, we, haven't had, we don't have anybody in the box. Finally, somebody comes over. Somebody's taking credit for it, finally. Ronnie Martinello. Spends two minutes in the box. Power play has been totally ineffective. All the way across, they skip a man. Hard shot and a goal. Eight to five, back to within three. And this New York team that is a very veteran squad and maybe one of the best coaching staffs in the major indoor lacrosse league, not giving up early. Here's Mito Martinello, a little bit concerned. They have climbed right back into this game. Four straight goals for the Saints. Well, we mentioned Dan Borges. He's one of their shooters. There's no question about that. He comes in close. The turbo defender doesn't come out to meet him. He could have walked in another five or six feet. So Wicky just didn't see it. He shot around the defender. Good to see Borges 
get in that offensive flow. He will also face off right now against Monty. Borges gets the ball. New York picks it up. They have control. They're down only by three. What a comeback so far. Four straight goals for New York. And Detroit a little bit stunned. They started off with a 5-0 lead. Detroit did. Looks like it was going to be a cakewalk. Right now they find themselves tested by the New York Saints. Second period action. They continue to hustle for those loose balls. First period start off all Detroit, as I mentioned. In this period, the second quarter, all New York. 5-1-5. Five five. Teams are even strength. And that telling stat that we talked about, Bruce, really helped them out. They got the effective power play. Now they're within three. They're in the game. Hard shot goes wide. Detroit looks a little bit leg-weary. Cummings now. Borges can't pick it up. Sloppy ball handling for the New York Saints. They don't seem crisp in traffic situations. Like no, they the sure don't. Goes. Jeff Goldberg used to play for the Saints. Hard shot. Jeff Goldberg is so happy being on this offensive explosion. He said he had more shots in the first game this year than he had all of last year. He's a veteran, and he really helps the morale on this turbo team. Well, in this game, he's not helping, uh, he's really helping the Turbos out because he knows tendencies, he knows what the coaches like to do, he knows how they like to stack up their defense. So I'm sure that is something that he brought to the practice last night for the Turbos. Good, good defensive push. Eight to five, the Saints are on the march. Down by three, and they've got the momentum. New York gets another chance for a power play as we look at Bob Engelke, the coach who has brought his team back with four straight goals and put them right back in this game. And spending some time in the box right now, number 21, David Suckamore. They can make this pay. Another hard shot. It's coming from the outside. Bruce, he's got a lot more confidence in that shot than you do. And yep. he has made it hit that and whistle that net twice. Two goals for Cummings from outside. This one brings the Saints back to within two. Five straight goals for New York. Now that shot was about four or five steps closer in than he had the last one. The turbos are playing a flex. Watch how close. He gets to walk right in. Instead of being a 30-foot shot, he's made it about a 20-foot shot. The turbos are... You know, one thing that I can tell you about Bob Engelke as we look at him on the bench there, this coaching staff is an excellent, thorough coaching staff. You can bet your bottom dollar that they think that is a weakness of Sawicki's, and that's why they're shooting it. Not just because Cummings likes that shot, but they feel that a hard shot from the outside can hit the corner if you've got the accuracy. Could well be. They've hit the top corner now four times, so I guess you're right. They're a thorough coaching staff that will really match up on tendencies, weaknesses, and... Uh, and strengths of players. So I think that would be something that they have really pulled out of game films. Sawicki so has always been what we would call a stopper as opposed to a reaction goalie. He sets up at the angle he thinks the shot's coming and he doesn't move. So New York using a little bit of strategy paying off and getting their power play to work. Nicholas out front. There's a bounce shot. Eight to seven. New York on a roll down to within one. Holy smokes, one, two, three, four, five, six straight goals for the Saints. The Saints are marching. They took a, they took a leaf leaf out of the uh, field lacrosse playbook as they go behind the net to set up. Here we see number 17, Jeff Nicholas. He's watching, he's trying to get the turbos turned around, throws it out front to Bob Piccolo. Bang, the turbos are looking the other way and he gets a good quality shot right in the net. And I'll tell you what, Ted Sawicki's thinking a little bit differently than he has most of this year. He has not had such a rattling experience in 1991. He is a little unsettled. We'll have to see if Nito Martinello starts thinking about his bench. Ted Sawicki, a tremendous goalie, first team all pro last year. But right now, he has allowed six straight to New York. And what is his mental state right now? He's got to be a little bit weak in the mental department. He's got to be wondering about those long shots, that's for sure. I think we'll see him coming out to meet them. Meanwhile, Benny does. Pfeiffer, look at that, Bruce. Benny Pfeiffer, very strong on the other end. They've taken away some of those easy shots on the far post that were burning Pfeiffer early in the game. Absolutely. I like Pfeiffer so far. He's looking real good. Another shooting shot. The New York player trying to tackle the Detroit player. It's allowed. It's allowed as long as nobody sees it. That was Gordon Purdy trying to bottle him up. He was a little bit tired. Now New York picks it up. That's Piccolo. New York again on the loose ball. 
Well, they're going to start stepping up to the activity. I'll tell you what, when, the, when Detroit gets mad, <laughs> the Saints are falling out of the box over there, trying to make substitutions, fresh legs, 8.40 left. Here's a shot by Purdy, and he just missed the pipe. That was the shot from outside that they seem to have gone with as, a, as really a key to their success. Yeah, they most definitely have identified uh, what they feel is a weakness in Sawicki, and so far it's, uh, it's coming up roses for them. They've scored about five from outside. What was Pfeiffer? We'll take, well, we'll take a look at Pfeiffer in a moment. Bob Engelke right now looking a little bit concerned, but his team is on a roll. Taking a look at Ted Sawicki, he is again down 5-4. to four. We talked about the advantage of the power play. New York again threatening to score on it. Look at that shot by Nicholas. Right off the pipe. It's 5-4. on four. Danny Pratt now in the box, the penalty box that is, for the Detroit Turbos, giving a man advantage to New York. And they are shelling Ted Sawicki, but he gets tough when he has to. He gobbles that one up, and this is where the Detroit Turbos have been extra dangerous in this particular game. They've scored two man down. The Gate brothers can score on two and three people. That is one of the keys to their effective use of offense when they're a man down. Look at the double team, Bruce. Two guys coming in, and that doesn't scare either of the Gate brothers. This is Paul. Beats one, beats two. Just trying to burn up some time. A minute ten left on the penalty. This guy has three goals already. He leads the league in goals. This will be a fast break opportunity if they can pick it up. Borges, he's a tremendous offensive player, gets it out to his trailing player, and they dropped it. Now this will be tough, a test for Pfeiffer. And Paul Gate missed it. The Gate brothers are tired. They're going off the field. Rodriguez is off. Paul Gate's going off. This will be a good advantage for New York if they can make the pass. Far side, fake, fake, and a great save by Sawicki. That was a tremendous opportunity for them, Bruce. They had a chance to score. They just couldn't get the clean pass in tight. Yeah, they don't... Uh, they don't seem to handle the ball well in traffic. Here's Sawicki making a save flat right in on the crease. Good stop. And the, and the fake was good by Nicholas down there, but he needed to take a step out into the wait. cylinder and yeah. give himself more of an angle. He never did that. He had the time. He could have leaped or leapt out in front, extended his body, and gained about probably 90% of the goal face. He was really taking himself out of it as we look in the sidelines. Again, the penalty box full of turbos. Danny Pratt, 35 seconds left there. Because there's no offside in this game, New York has just taken a penalty to even things up. Because there's no offside, the long pass can become very valuable. The turbos have the long pass in their arsenal. The Saints don't seem to have it. So the Saints have seemed to find what works against Ted Sawicki. They need to make their extra man, their power play work. Right now, it's four on four. And Lemon, the Canadian, over to Paul and Gary Gate. This is a dangerous lineup in there for the Turbos. They've got Martinello, Park down low, Gary up top, Gary Gate. Now they are shifting some players around. Ron Martinello comes in, number six. This is fun because it's four on four. More of the floor is opened up, and that watch them spread things out. Watch the turbo spread the whole deal out, and then run somebody through. They waited for Danny Pratt to come in. They wanted to get the five on four, so they were very patient. Now going all the way across. Look at the stick work all the way across the park, and Vinny Pfeiffer with a tremendous save. Pfeiffer has really refused to come unglued with that early barrage and has kept his team in. Yeah, they got to him early and uh, on some goals that I didn't think were his fault. He's been the story since then. Well, there's the long pass that the Saints don't have. They cannot connect with that long one yet. And that's John Reese down there waiting for it. Yeah. The All-America from Yale, but they were really just trying to dump it into the corner and burn up some more time. 48 seconds more on the man down. This is a real test of the man down unit for New York. Look at the stick work. Park had the open shot and literally missed by six feet. That time again he has a shot and puts it right into the belly of Vinnie Pfeiffer. You're right, they threw that last pass away because you have only 10 seconds to get the ball up over half court when you're shorthanded. Bovich comes down against three and four defensive players. There'll be a call. Tap. Yes. Bovich gets the benefit of a call and words are exchanged. Mike Bierman moving in. This will put another player into the box for Detroit, and New York gets an opportunity. Here's the kind of hitting in the major indoor lacrosse league that's commonplace. One, two, three men hit him, and Bovich finally goes down. Well, the shot that was up high to the head was the one that gives him the two minutes. You've got to stay away from those deliberate shots above the shoulders. That'll send another Detroit Turbo into Doddridge country, and two more minutes. That's Neil, Gary Gates sitting down right Gary now. Gary Gates in there, and you know, Neil Doddridge... Uh, I like to kid him, he's a great player. 
but he hasn't been in there tonight at all. They're taking away his penalty time. Cook is still in for New York. Irrigated for the turbos. They've got eight seconds. They'll wait for that to expire. The shot clock down to 23. Cook will come in. That'll give them the five on four. Right now it's four on four. New York takes their time. They get it behind. There they Whistle go with that blows. field, that field play again. Timeout. As soon as the or as soon as the penalty was over, uh, Bob took a timeout, and that's where they are. They'll come back. They will be extra for the last two minutes going into the end of the second quarter. Scoring by quarters, this is how the game went. The first five goals of the game were for Detroit, 8-3 to three at the end of the first quarter, but they really had to break the momentum, New York did, of the great offense of Detroit, and they did that in fine fashion. The last six goals by the Saints, and they are threatening to tie the game. Power play for New York. Moving the ball well, and Nicholas, and the shot clock expired. They came back in, Bruce. They only had 16 seconds left on the shot clock after the timeout, and they, I don't think, were aware of that. That was an excellent idea of the way they've got to develop their plays. Paul Gate, hard shot. Vinny Pfeiffer makes an excellent save. Paul Gate came flying out of the exchange box, and that's where he'll stay for the offensive end of things. Let's see if the Saints do that again and put Jeff Nicholas right in the middle, number 17. There he goes. He's going right into the middle of your screen. Trying to get it to him. Nicholas has it, takes a shot, and a nice save by Sawicki. What that does is it forces the turbo four men to collapse on him so that even those outside shots become closer than they were before. Jeff Goldberg into Park. Park takes a hard shot, and he has lost the sights for a little while tonight. He has usually tremendous accuracy from that pipe position. Peter Park has missed the last three shots against Vinnie Pfeiffer. Hard shot off the pipe. Under four minutes, second period. New York Saint is down. Getting up slowly. Sawicki went down on one knee, and he was lucky because that shot again went over his shoulder, but right off the pipe. One goal separates these two teams. Detroit came out of this game with a 5 0 lead. The Saints have clawed back, scoring the last six. So two big swings in the middle has been pretty competitive. How much would you bet that the Turbos would get shut out in any quarter, the major indoor lacrosse league? Well, three more minutes left, and they would get shut out in this quarter, and that would be a hefty bet. You're absolutely right. Gary Gate coming in. Good defense by New York. All across to Doddridge. He finds the back door. Nicely passed by the Detroit Turbos. The crowd liking the physical element of the game. Of course, the Turbos are as physical as anybody in the major of the cross game. They are, but you've got to like the way the Saints are hustling for possession. Bovich gets it on the crease and an easy shot out in front. Mike Sullivan had everything in front of him and couldn't find the net. They've obviously decided to penetrate, put somebody right in the middle, and make that turbo defense collapse. Which, again, I think gives credit to the coaching staff. They started with outside shots. They got Detroit thinking about the outside shots. That opened up the middle. Then they put somebody in the middle. Now they're collapsing right in front of Sawicki. They are really moving the offensive philosophy to fit their needs and their skills. They are. Very impressive so far. Mueller tries to find the dragging offensive player behind him. This is Terry Martinello. He's got a great shot, but Vinny Pfeiffer just eats it up. 2.30 left in the second quarter. Pfeiffer has been sensational. It was 8-1. to one. Can you believe that? It was 8-1 to one at one point in the first quarter. Seven straight goals. Or six straight, rather, to make it 8-7. to seven. Tremendous comeback by the Saints. One goal to tie it up. They try to sneak in again to that middle area. And that inability to catch it in traffic is hurting him a little bit. Cummings. Moving pick. Moving pick. Called against Ed Cook. Watch out. This is when the turbos are tough. All the way down. Watch out. Terry's got a shot and saved by Vinnie Pfeiffer. You've got to be stationary when you're setting those picks. And Cook wasn't. He was moving and he got the turbo player from behind. It was called for that moving pick. This is Mueller. Into Terry Martinello, he's an excellent shooter. And he Pfeiffer gobbles that one up. He's not getting the ball in his stick. He's feeling pretty good about himself. I guess he? so, I guess so. <laughs> and he should. He's had a sensational <laughs> second quarter. Maybe the only goalie this year to shut out the strong offense of the Detroit Turbos. He's got a minute 20 left to do that. The Turbos are now shooting the 30-foot shot. The Saints are coming up with the excellent defense, forcing the Turbos to shoot from the outside. Cook now, the whistle blows. Holding call against New York. The ball go back to the Turbos. And by every indication, by every barometer of this game, 
New York has to feel great about where they are in this, in this position. Eight no to seven. question. No question about it. They were ready to pack their bags, as you said, 8-1 to one in the first quarter. They've come back soundly. There's a delayed penalty call. Sawicki is out of the net, and there's an extra man. Well, Pfeiffer will really be tested if he wants to get that shutout for the second quarter. So far, Detroit has not scored in the second quarter. 8-7. to seven. They'll have a power play now with 55 seconds left in the half. But also, Bruce Tobin brings up another point. You've got a very hot goalie in Vinny Pfeiffer. What do you do as we look at him here in the second half? This game drains your goalie. You've got another guy who is just as good, Sal Acasio, on the sideline. Do you stay with Pfeiffer or do you go to your fresh guy? I like Vinny. We'll have to see what Bob Engelke does. That's the second half action. Now we've got 46 seconds left in the first half. And Vinny Pfeiffer threatening to shut out the Detroit Turbos. This could be the tie goal. They come now with a bounce shot. And Sawicki makes the great save. Scott Huff. Bounce shot. Scott Huff from CW Post. Another call. And this will put somebody in the box. I think they're going to have another man down. We're going to have a look at the end of that play. But uh, John Reese was really the man who set that up. He took, uh, took the turbo player heavily into the boards, got the loose ball, and threw it up to Todd Esposito. The turbos have just drawn a penalty, and uh, geez, it looks like your friend. No, it's not. It's Gary Gate. Turbo penalty Gary Gate in the Gary box. Gate that means simultaneous. They both got. Well, we've got 141 left on one penalty. It looks like and Gary Gate has two minutes on his. So if New York can hold off here, they've got 40 seconds on the shot clock. It's no factor because there are 27, as you can see, See that moving down now. 23, 22 left in the half. They'll try to get one good shot. They'll come back, and with a winning faceoff, they'll have a power play to begin the second half. A good shot is what they're looking for. 12 seconds. Gorgeous. He's a great shooter. Gorgeous going through two players. Takes a shot, bounces it between the legs, but a nice save by Ted Sawicki. That should do it for the scoring. Goldberg's got three seconds to get a shot off. He won't do it. Time winds down. That's it on the time clock, but what a sensational first half of play. It was all Detroit early on. They got off to an 8-1 to one lead. Six straight goals by New York. They're right back in it. 8-7. to seven. We've got a great second half coming up. Welcome back to our Coors Light Halftime Report here at our game in Joe Louis Arena, Detroit, Michigan. There's the score, 8-7. to seven. A very close game that wasn't always that way. It started out a blowout for Detroit. They scored the first five goals, built a commanding 8-1 to one lead before six straight goals by the New York Saints got them right back in this game. Bruce Todman, my hat's off to the coaching staff of the New York Saints. You've got to be impressed with the way they adjusted. First, they came out taking what I would call a long shot, but they were beating Sawicki. Then, when the turbos came out to meet those outside shooters, they started putting a man in the inside, and now they're getting shots from the inside, and both are working. Excellent. And New York's got players to work with in the offensive end of the field. We had a chance to talk to one of those special offensive threats from the New York Saints. We talked to him earlier. Let's meet him now. Well, we always talk about the growth of lacrosse, and our halftime guest really is a good example of that growth. You have to go all the way around the other side of the world to find his hometown, Gordon Purdy, from Australia. And Gordon, you played at Adelphi, one of the great programs in the United States, but tell us how you got there from Australia and maybe compare Australian lacrosse with the States. Right, in 1986 I went to Can Canada, uh, Toronto, Canada, where I played in the 86 World Games. And uh, Tom Flatley, the manager here at New York Saints, he spotted me out and he found a spot for me at Adelphi and I was really happy there for three years. Well, now compare the games. In Australia it's a little bit more of a club game only. You don't play in high schools. Compare the field game. Uh, the field game, uh, mainly the comparisons would be the fast moving of um, going up and down. It's, in Australia it's, it's, not too, uh, it's not too heavy commitment as here in the States. Uh, the skill level is a little bit different then? Yeah, definitely. There's definite skill level difference. And that was found in the 1990 games down in uh, Perth. All right, now you're in your second year in the MILL. Tell us about that transition. Right, I'm really enjoying it here. Uh, I've really found a spot for myself on the team in New York, and uh, I'm, I really feel I'm fitting in quite well. Now, last game, which was just last night, you scored three goals. Before that game, you only had one, so you are making a lot of adjustments and getting a lot better than your offensive skills. Right, yeah, I, I try to move the ball around a little bit and uh, 
and, and go hard when I get a chance on, on the cage. Yes, yes, last night I had, uh, yeah, I came up with three, so I was real happy with that. Talk about these Gate brothers. We talk about them all the time, but uh, what an adjustment for any player to come in here and have to contend with them. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them three times in club, and I've seen them a few times. Uh, uh, I saw them in Perth uh, recently this summer. So it, it's going to be a real tough, tough one. Well, now, with the New York Saints looking at a tough road to hoe to get into these finals, how do you think your team is coming together for this 91 season? Uh, well, at the moment, we're, uh, we're working for what we get. We had a real tough loss last night. That's really going to hurt us, but we're all, you know, we had a good trip out here together. We've been doing a lot of talking, and we're really re ready to put it together tonight. All right, Gordon Purdy, one of the great stars for the New York Saints squad. You might wonder where he goes when he goes home. He grew up in Australia, came to the States. He married Tom Flatley's secretary when he went down there, or uh, oh, Darty. Paul Darty is coach at Adelphi. So he's in the States now and uh, looking to continue in the teaching profession. Gordon Purdy from the New York Saints team. Welcome back to our Coors Light halftime. Leif Elsmo along with Bruce Todman. And look at the stats. Two of them jump out pretty quick to you, Bruce. Yeah, obviously the shots on goal and loose balls. We talk about this often. If you've got the ball, it should turn out or result in a shot on goal. New York hustled their butt for the whole period, and they that's why they led in loose balls. They did a tremendous job. Well, two areas we thought they could really make a dent if they, could, if they were going to have a chance at all. One was the penalty situation. One stat in there also that was impressive. Nine to four. There are nine penalties for Detroit. Only four for New York. They've had twice as many opportunities. They've made them count in the late part of the second quarter to get them back in the game. Their, for, their forte is obviously defense. They've played great defense, but they've got to they've got to do a bit more in the other end as well. As we this watch is, Gary uh, Gates some score. important goals, yeah. This is Paul Gate in his third goal. That gave him a hat trick. It was 8-1 to one at that point. And boy, New York was just looking for, co for cover. They were getting shelled. But then six straight goals. This goal by Bob Cummings made it 8-6 to six and put them right back into the game. They scored one more beyond that. The New York team has scored, unofficially in our stats, seven different players, Bruce, have scored their seven goals. Another trademark to a team that is very well-rounded and well-coached. They are. I think hats off at this point goes to their coaching. They do have to spread that offense around. They've got a couple of real good shooters, Borges and Nicholas. They've been doing their bit. But you're right, if they, if they can spread it out even more, they'll be much better off. One of the big stories for the second half is going to be who's going to be in the goal. We'll find out when we come back. The third quarter is getting ready to start as we continue our coverage on Prime Network of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. We're back at Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, 8-7, to seven, and Detroit has found themselves in a dogfight. Look at the turbos this year compared to last. Halfway through the season, they are on the same amount of goals scored, doubling their per-game score of last year. Goals allowed on about the same level as last year, but their offense has doubled in its potency from about 11 goals a game to over 20. It sure is. They've came out uh, like a ball on fire, that's for sure. But they've got a handful right now with the New York Saints. Saints, as we talked about, so well coached, and they've proven that year in and year out. The best stats for goals allowed in the history in the fifth year of MILL. We'll see what adjustments each team has made. Each team comes out with their same goalie. Nice check from behind. And it's the Saints off to a fast break. Moving it down, one-on-one. -on -one. Hard shot in close. That's Reese. Reese had the shot, couldn't get the score. And again, controlled by New York. Way out front, Cummings likes the hard shot. It's all tied at eight. Seven straight goals for New York. Mike Cummings just drilled one in the top corner. Watch Sawicki. He's going down on one knee. Now watch as Cummings winds up. As the ball is let go, Sawicki's down on one knee, and the ball is going over the top of his shoulder. Well, obviously something I didn't pick up, but they did. They sure did, and they're hitting that spot and beating Sawicki. Another thing to remember, Bruce, is that this coaching staff, you've got Bob Engelke, who was a four-time All-American in Adelphi. He met Purdy, the Australian who went to Adelphi. But Bob Engelke played for Flatley, played for John Phillips. John Phillips was the manager for the United States World Team in Australia this year, and Sawicki was the goalie for Canada. All these guys on the coaching staff of the New York Saints have coached the world teams who have played against Sawicki. They know his tendencies very, very well. It's a good point. And they're a very, not only well coached, they're a very tight unit. 
Wings again, head fake, he'll take that hard shot, and a nice check by Goldberg, his ex-teammate. Ooh, Goldberg just got a piece of that stick, and Cummings was looking for that high rocket. Eight to eight. Seven straight goals to tie it up for New York. Ball in close. There's a shot, and the New York Saints have climbed into the lead. Unbelievable. The crowd booing a little bit, but New York, sensational comeback. Eight straight goals, nine to eight. Who would ever believe? And here we go again. This is another excellent shot, but again, Sawicki is going down on one knee. We talked about him starting this half. That's a questionable move by Mito yeah. Martinello. We'll see how long he goes with him. He's got Samut on the sideline, an excellent Canadian goalie. But the Saints, full of confidence and really doing a great job of working on the weaknesses of a first-team All-Pro goalie. Ted Zawicki, the turbos, best of the league. The Turbos play what they call a, a floor. It's not a zone per se, but it's a helping man out or a floating man on man. And that gives the players on the opposition the opportunity to shoot from the outside. The Saints are taking advantage of it, and normally, Zawicki would be eating them up. And, of course, when you stay on offense, another shot in close. You keep the ball out of the stick of the great gate combination. The Twin Turbos have not had the ball. Cummings comes in, goes for the near pipe, but saved. Slap check there. No good. Mueller now has the ball for the Turbos. Good pressure put on by the New York Saints over the first two and a half minutes of the third period. You're right, Leaf. It, so it sounds trite, but you're absolutely right. If the Saints have the ball, the Gate brothers do not. He does now. This is Gary Gay. Nice check. Now a double team. Watch the passing. He's double teamed. Somebody is wide open. He moves it out front to his brother. Paul was open. A hard shot. And Vinny Pfeiffer comes up strong. No, I look again. It is not Vinny Pfeiffer. That is Sal Lacasio. Correct that. Sal Lacasio is now in the goal. So Bob Engelke and his coaching brain trust went with Lacasio. Vinny Pfeiffer had a tremendous first half. He shut out Detroit. It may be the first time and maybe the last time that this team with a great <laughs> offense gets shut out this year. It definitely is the first time. Lacasio, who played last night, who went all the way against Pittsburgh, he's fresh now, and he's in the goal for the Saints. It might seem like a questionable move, but uh, if you look at the history, oh my God. Hard shot go. from the backside. Bobby Cook puts the Saints up by two, and Sawicki is shell-shocked. I will be very surprised if Mino Martinell doesn't make a move quickly. 10 to 8, they're up by 2, they've scored 9 straight goals. Here's Cook coming around, again another high, hard one. Sawicki, there he is, down on his knees, into the top corner. The Turbos have called a timeout. Let's see if they warm up that other goalie. We'll take a break, we'll see what adjustments they make. The Saints are on a roll. Sal Ocasio starts the second half, and there is the scoring line. And look at the goose eggs for Detroit. Eight goals in the first quarter, none in the second. They're scoreless through four minutes of the third. Ocasio, a great All-American, now from Massachusetts, now in the goal for New York. And Bruce, you start talking about his credentials. They are excellent. They're not dropping down any notch at all in ability. No, not at all. Ocasio from the University of Massachusetts. What they've done in the past is they've alternated the goalies. Last year, they split the duty just about down the middle. Borges just saved a goal. He did do it again. Borges playing defense on the far side. Knocks that of Gary's stick. And the ball's still on the ground down there. They're not getting good shots. Hard to tell. We're way up here in the upper area. It looks like Gary Gate, but he's not running like Gary Gate. So that last shot, I'll take that back. Once, of course, you score the nine goals and you really get some offense going, the intimidation factor against the Gates, the Gates have really intimidated everybody, that sort of goes away, it blends into the background with the confidence that you build. Well, it's contagious, you know, success is contagious. The Saints have seen how that they can stop them for an entire period, and now everybody's picking up the fever. Pete Park comes up from behind, tries to get the ball from Cook. Cook moves it in. Two-goal lead by the Saints. They were down eight to one. They've scored nine straight. And now are putting intense pressure on Ted Sawicki. Sawicki, though, gathers this one up relatively easily. Edo Martinell elected to stay with Sawicki, who was shell-shocked in the second quarter. It was five goals against Sawicki. One, two, three, four. Four goals in the second quarter. Shot in on Lacasio. Right off the pipe again. Here comes the fast break. This is about as fast as it gets for the Saints. Not really a lot of burners. Huff now all the way across. 
Going against Doddridge. Doddridge playing defense. Nicholas sets the nice pick. And Pete Park comes out. Look at that. 65 defense. And he comes up with the ball. Right back into the stick of Huff. Out to number seven for New York. And let's keep up with it. Tom Towers. Actually, it was John Brees. Let me catch up with the play. John Brees had it down low. Dropped it back to Tom Towers. 11 to 8. This is unbelievable. The crowd is stunned as Sawicki, right along with them, just does not know what the answer is. He is confused. Vito Martinello has got to make a move soon. Well, that's the first one that you can't fault Sawicki on. And there is Samut on the sideline right now. It doesn't look like he's getting ready to come in. Rex, Rexdale is a little town just outside of uh, just outside of Toronto. That's where he grew up and played most of his minor lacrosse. Here we go, lead, and look at this, Board just gets the face off. Nicholas comes in, another hard shot deflected at the last moment. An unbelievable offensive showing against the Turbos, who have taken over the league offensively. Here comes a fast break. Up to Roddy Martinello, he has no speed, so he will be overtaking immediately, but he's got a great shot, and you can see it on that one that went just to the left of the pipe. Terry Martinello. Set up their offense. Hard shot out there against Lacasio, and that really is not what you want to do. Here, Lacasio comes in fresh, Bruce. You really want to test him. Don't get him a chance to get comfortable. Their shots have not been that much of a test against Lacasio. But there's another test on Sawicki. John Reese, the great All American from Yale. It's 12 to 8. The crowd's booing, and Mito Martinello has to wake up and get another goalie in there. Finally, he waves him off. He has a lot of confidence in him, but maybe that confidence has cost him dearly. Great shot coming off the pass, and Reese gets a goal. We'll be back. Well, Mino Martinell has made the move. Samut now comes into the game. He wears the traditional field lacrosse helmet, and it's very tough. The reason I question that move, it's easy to do it in hindsight, and you really can't do it, Bruce, but coming in the middle of a quarter, you don't get the warm-up time. If you came in at the half break, you get a traditional warm-up. You feel comfortable. You feel confident. I agree with you 100%. Uh, he's coming in as cold as a mackerel right now. And Sawicki was not confident in the first uh, half, and it showed in his play. But now, Samut's going to have to put up with it. It's riding on his shoulders. And, of course, Mito has had Ted Sawicki, a first-team All-Pro, win games for him for the years that this Turbo team has been in this division. So he felt confident that uh, Sawicki would do it again, so that's why he stuck with him. Sawicki has played many games all four quarters. So it's not that unusual that he would stick with his number one guy. You'd have to, you'd have to say, Leaf, that he is the best goalie on balance in the, in the major indoor league. And, and Mito wasn't going to dance with anybody else. He was going to dance with the guy who brought him there. But he's made his change now. 12 to 8. Four goal lead by the Saints. An 11 goal run. We've got to go to the record books to see if this has ever been done before. And look at the Saints. Here's Borges with a shot from out front. They are very confident, putting intense pressure. Here's Towers. Tom Towers was part of that last score. Purdy. Purdy comes in and scores against Sabut. And as we talked about, a good shot against a cold goalie is really going to put pressure on him. And Sabut felt the pressure and allows goal number 13 for New York. There's the mate, Gordon Purdy from Australia. Using the defender as a bit of a screen, a bounce shot, caught the five hole on Samut, right between his legs. An unbelievable game that's set up to be a blowout for Detroit, and of course, eight to one, now it's 13 to eight, 12 straight goals for the Saints. When you get that early eight to one lead, Bruce, it's still the first quarter, you definitely have to lose a little mental edge. You're ahead so early, it takes away a little bit of that upper echelon of energy that you put out for championship play. I agree with you. I think that they got out to that early lead, and they just sort of sat on it thinking, here we go, this is another route. We can, we can, uh, you know, they'll mail us the two points. We've, we've beaten them now. Not so. New York stood their ground. Vinnie Pfeiffer had a sensational first half after that early onslaught that really was more against his defense than him. Now they've got a fresh goalie, Lacasio, in there. And as they were getting their defense in order in the first half, they really started picking on some tendencies that they felt were would be successful against the great goalie, Ted Sawicki. They were shooting the high shot that we were having a tough time understanding until it was obvious that it was part of their game plan. We were the last ones to figure it out, I guess. No, you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave us the picture pretty quick because uh, the coaching 
staff for New York just kept with that game plan and had to feel that that was part of a structured offense. And one thing that's missing from the Turbos right now, and that's their fast break transition game. Let's see if they can pick that up. I have to focus a little bit on the twin Turbos, too, because they have really been taken out of the game. Let's see if they rise up and take charge. This is the tandem that will carry the Turbos. Mueller out front, hard shot, beats Lacasio. And the crowd says about time. 13-9, back to within four. They just got the crowd back into the game with one simple shot. Is that Adam Mueller coming across the top of the key? Number 16, Adam Mueller out of Michigan. 6'2", 200 pounds. Good sidearm shot. Here we see it. Here's a better angle. Yeah, good. No, it didn't bounce right in the middle of the net. Lacasio going down Alasawicki on one knee and the ball going over his shoulder. Good hard shot by Mueller. So I don't have the official time between goals, but there was about, about 30 minutes between scores for the Detroit Turbos. That's amazing. I don't think the Turbos are out of this one yet, though, my friend. New York now gets the face off. They'll be looking for Sullivan to bring the ball down. He tries to get help. Turbo is definitely stepping up their defense now. John Reese, boy, this guy is tough. Captain of the Yale football team. Reese goes through two players. He loses the ball, but that'll be a penalty. John Reese just pumps his arm. Let me tell you, John Reese, number 16 for New York. Nobody's tougher. First team All-American in the lacrosse game. A captain of the Yale football team. He was a linebacker. So you think three guys bother him? No way. Well, you're not going to hurt a guy who doesn't wear socks. Not even with three guys hit him. One, two, three. Starting linebacker for the Yale football team. That's the kind of contact he likes. Two minutes for calf roping. And that calf rope was on... Adam Mueller, who just scored the goal. So Adam gave him one. He may take it away with that two-minute penalty. Let's see if they can take advantage of the power play. It's five against four for New York. And this is tough pressure for Samut. There goes Nicholas into the middle. Ball moving around. They've got to get a score against Samut. The goal is way off the pins. Way out of line. They've got to adjust that goal. It doesn't really lock in on anything. They've got some sandbags holding it in place at the back there. They want it to be mobile so that you don't kill yourself when you run into it. They've got a reset 40-second shot clock. But a bad percentage shot they took. So as we figure out that again, that uh, drought was about 26 minutes, 26 and change was the drought for the Turbos where they did not score. They were totally shut out in the second quarter. An amazing stretch for the Saints. Cummings up top, down to the wing, and a hard shot. Save, though. McEntee gets the shot. Samut gets the save. Still up by one. It's five on four. Nicholas from Virginia brings it down. About a minute left on the penalty to Adam Mueller. They can't handle the ball. This could cost them. Now it's back in their hands. A behind-the-back pass. One, two, and a hard shot, and a goal by the Saints. Don Borges takes the ball after three passes, a la Gates. We'll be back. Here's a replay of the last goal, and Bruce, they pass the ball just like the twin turbos. Behind the back, and then back out in front to Don Borges. He buried it behind Samut. The work on that play was done by Bob Piccolo at center. He took the ball off Gary Gate, who was running down the floor with it, and started that whole, that whole affair. Well, the confidence level of the New York Saints is never been higher than it is right now. Nobody gave them a chance. If Vegas had a line on this game, it would have been probably double digits. If you took just their season averages, there was a difference of nine and a half goals. And then they got off to that eight to one deficit in the first quarter. They were down by seven. It's absolutely incredible. They have outscored the Turbos since that point. 13 to 1. A lot of teams would have folded right at that point, Lee, but they did not. Credit, credit to them. And they stuck to their game plan and really started to make it work. Cook now works the backside, tried to get it into that crease area. Bruce, you talked about him working that cylinder. And they're still looking to pick it up right in front of Samut. I think they've got the most uh, the most motion of any team we've seen this year in the op opposition's end. It's not resulting in a lot of uh, a lot of real good shots, but at least they're trying. They've got good motion on offense. I'll tell you something else they're doing that may have paid dividends for them. They are not really. It's not that they're ignoring the gates. 
but they're not focusing their whole game plan on the gate. They said, look, we're just going to play them. We'll try not to make mistakes. They're not giving them any good shot opportunities, but they're trying to score goals, which is what some other teams haven't done. You end up focusing on the gates all game, and then, oh, by the way, we got to score goals, and that's what we've seen more times than not against the Detroit Turbos. That's right. That's what happened to the Bulls a couple of weeks ago. They got caught up in their defensive strategies and ended up with no flow on offense. Well, Mike Samut came out of the goal and almost got himself two minutes. Sawicki almost had to come back in, dress back up. Samut almost got himself up apparently for this play. He comes out to cover up the ball. Oh, he was pulled down from behind and if that play continued, you would have seen Samut retaliate with a little bit of a nine iron shot. Birdie now. He's got two guys on the ground. He beat both players way out front. Sullivan with a rocket shot that bounces off of the defensive players. Sullivan picks it up. They got to move the ball. They do. Cummings with the hard shot. Takes one fake in a wide open net. Sullivan missed it. Sullivan had a chance for the wide open net and could not get it off. Cummings. Boy, New York looks confident. Purdy. Still trouble controlling it in traffic. Cummings now with a bounce shot, trying to get the shot clock reset. They lose the ball. Cummings with the outside shot with two seconds left in the shot clock. They miss it, but a good offensive series. Five goal lead for New York, third period. The Saints are showing a disdain for the Turbos. They're not uh, intimidated by them whatsoever. All right, now here's the gate combination. This is Gary. These guys you know are going to step forward sooner or later. Let's see what happens here. Defense by Sullivan. Sullivan's a big boy. They double team him there and get the ball back out. They dump it out front. Watch out. Gary takes a rocket shot. No goal. No goal. They're waving it off. No goal. Sal Ocasio. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. One referee's waving it off, and the other one's got his hands up in the air. Now they're going to talk. One go that one referee They're totally counting. ignored the other. That was bizarre. Nino Martinello saying, we'll take it. Well, you knew that Lacasio was in trouble. They're trying to hold Lacasio because they don't want him out of the game. But the bizarre thing was the one referee totally ignored the other. One said no, the other one said yes. Let's have a look at it here and see what all the hubbub is about. There's the shot. Now, the goal is presumably in now. I think it was in the goal. Look from here. It's hard uh, to tell. Let's take a look from here. Watch it go right back to the corner. Why he would be waving it off, I, I didn't see. Well, I don't know. Hit the There's the ball. No, it's, it's in the... That's right. Hard to say. Hit the pipe. Hit the pipe. Yeah, we couldn't tell. Hard to tell. That certainly is not... Well, whether we could tell or not... goal. But whether, whether we could tell or not, the it's goal judge the put the light on. That's right. Was that a, it's on the Paul Gate? Is that a Paul Gate credit? Yes. 14 to 10. Second goal of the quarter for Detroit. Here they come. This is Gary Gate all the way across. Just misses... Brian Lemon. Lemon comes in, checked from behind. Nice defensive checks from behind, which is also an excellent way to play this Canadian combinations. Ocasio. Ball checked away. Another nice defensive technique again is they're checking the sticks of the Canadian players, not getting concerned with the body on body, because you really have a tough time winning that contest of just taking them out of the play physically. Ball gate, double checked, and the ball comes out. Hard shot. Ocasio makes the save. Whoa, the action's non-stop, 14 to 10, a four-goal lead by New York. That's right, New York. And another save by Samut, who is getting confidence with every one. Look at this ball going up and down the floor. A minute 52 left, just under two minutes in the third quarter, and they are sprinting up and down. They're hammering the ball up the floor, both teams. Samut now seems to be settled, as you see the time left in the third period. Lee Felsmo along with Bruce Todman. And an unbelievable upset, a potential upset, 14 to 10. The Saints lead right now after being down by seven in the first quarter. Here comes Dodridge. Open field for him. Takes a hit, looks deep. Rodriguez, hard left shot, left-handed shot, bounces off the arm pad of Rocasio. He's getting a little bit physical here, and you might imagine they would. The Turbos have not been in a game that's been this close all year. So, you know, being in an unfamiliar position, uh, we're going to see here whether they can whether they can suck it up. And I think it's a little bit more than just being behind. They were embarrassed. I mean, nobody ever would have believed that somebody could score that many goals against them and hold them scoreless for that much time. 
That was a shock to the fans. It was a shock to the team. Character test right here. Rodriguez. Under a minute to play now in the third. Absolutely. Hard shot bounces off of New York. New York again playing good technical defense. They're not giving up the body position and they're using the checks with the stick. They're not sacrificing that body position. Cummings on the far side. Sullivan finds Cummings. Cummings fakes, fakes, and goes to the far pipe and a save by Samut. Another good chance by New York. Those are very, very important saves. Samut with two big ones in the last minute and a half. He has stabilized the defense. He has made the saves. And ironically, they're not, the Saints are not taking those long shots on Samut. They're working the ball in. They don't know how to play him as much as they, they don't have a book on him as much as they do against Ted Sawicki. This is Terry Martinello just trying to build his way in. Mueller tries to get some room for him. Tommy Towers gets it up front. Here's a fast break. Cummings, Cummings comes in, takes the left-handed shot. The quarter expired. The turbos have not been in a game that's been this close all year. So, you know, being in an unfamiliar position, uh, we're going to see here whether they can whether they can suck it up. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more than just being behind. They were embarrassed. I mean, nobody ever would have believed that somebody could score that many goals against them and hold them scoreless for that much time. That was a shock to the fans. It was a shock to the team. Character test right here. Rodriguez. Under a minute to play now in the third. Absolutely. Hard shot bounces off of New York. New York again playing good technical defense. They're not giving up the body position and they're using the checks with the stick. Not sacrificing that body position. Cummings on the far side. Sullivan finds Cummings. Cummings fakes, fakes, and goes to the far pipe. And a save by Samut. Another good chance by New York. Those are very, very important saves. Samut with two big ones in the last minute and a half. He has stabilized the defense. He has made the saves. And ironically, they're not, the Saints are not taking those long shots on Samut. They're working the ball in. They don't know how to play him as much as they, they don't have a book on him as much as they do against Ted Sawicki. Terry Martinello just trying to build his way in. Mueller tries to get some room for him. Tommy Towers gets it up front. Here's a fast break. Cummings, Cummings comes in, takes the left-handed shot. The quarter expires, but we have a dogfight. The Saints lead 14 to 10. The Turbos have time to come on back. Let's see if they can do it. We pick up action just about two minutes into the fourth quarter. The score of 14 to 10 still. It's two men. The situation is four on four. Bruce, help me out here. We got two men on the penalty box. One on each team. So it's four on four right now. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> the Saints now applying pressure. Samut in the goal for Detroit. And another wing shot. They've been pushing the ball in with a little bit different technique against Samuth than they had been against Ted Sawicki. Pat Lee gets it into the cylinder, and they dunk the ball into Lacasio, but he makes a great save. Push call. The ball will go back to Detroit. Look at Sal Lacasio. All over the goal. Well, he's a big boy. When you say he's all over the goal, it, he's all over the goal. Well, you know, they have him listed here at 5'11", 210. That is wrong. I guarantee you he is over six feet tall. He's a big, big target. Absolutely. He almost kicked it in himself. You see the butt end of his stick just nudging it past the post. He almost put it in his own net. The butt end of the stick saved that goal for him. And now pressure, big Pete Park, six foot five, taking a shot against Lacasio. This is tight end against middle linebacker. And they are going into a little bit of a, a scrum on the field. I'll tell you what, tactically, Bruce, is this is that pretty much of a desperation move? I mean, Paul and Gary Gay can normally go through people. Here you give it to Pete Park and just say, back yourself in and get a shot. Not much technique involved. No, there's not. They're, they're definitely out of their normal game plan, and the Saints have forced them out of it. Now look at Samut coming up. He might come into the action. Ball knocked down by the defense of the Saints, playing right in the cylinder. Brian Lemon, wait a minute, Eric Whistle, I believe. We've got about 12 minutes, about 11.45 left in the fourth period. The Saints lead by four. I mentioned, I'm sorry, Leif. I mentioned earlier how uh, Sawicki is a classic stopper. Mike Samud 
is an aggressive offensive goalie. He can handle the ball with that big stick. And right now he's at about quarter quarter court and he was up to half to half court there for a minute and looked like he was going to come into the offense. Which again seems a little, to be a little bit of a desperation move to me. They've got plenty of time. This is the guy you want to have the ball. Gary Gate at the front. Park's another good target. He takes a good shot. Get Gary and Paul in the open field. Paul is begging for the ball up at top of the cylinder. Paul's up top. If Gary can find him, finally he does, but Gary, or Paul rather, misses the ball. Here comes Samut, wide open. And Samut takes him out of the action. Oh, now he's really taking him out of the action. Samut, they ought to give him two minutes, but they're not going to do it. Samut takes a swing, and he stays in the game. Well, here comes Samut protecting his defensive zone. He had taken a couple of steps and just leveled Don Borges. As far as I understand, that's okay in the rules. Well, the swing is the thing that may not be correct. The referees right now are talking it over. We'll be back with more of the fourth quarter. Well, there's Samut going into the penalty box. 14 to 10, you see the score, 11 minutes left. This is a critical time. And Samut, he threw a punch after he leveled the hit. The hit was good, the punch was not. He gets in the box for a two-minute penalty. That brings Ted Sawicki back into the goal. This could be the story, Bruce, of a win or a loss for the Turbos. Well, I don't understand this, frankly, and uh, Mike Samut's having a bit of trouble, too. I guarantee you that's the first penalty he's ever served in his entire life as a goaltender. I thought maybe they the would take punch a player, possibly. I thought they would take a player, as they do with most normally put a player off the floor into the penalty box but not make the goaltender serve it well let's explain there's Ted Sawicki he's in the goal there's Samut and Ron Martinello you've got Mar um, Ron Martinello coming back in with four seconds and then it'll be even up here's what got him in the box that there's very end that punch and then he threw him down but that right when we began that replay you saw the right hand came in a pretty good crashing blow and that's why Ted Sawicki who had, had a very rough time in the second and third periods he is back in the goal, totally cold. This is worse than coming out when you don't have a warm-up. When you've had a chance to cool back down, all that sweat gets cold in your body, you're not loose at all, you haven't had a chance to warm up, plus you're mentally rattled. Mito Martinello trying to get Goldberg all squared away, and they are in trouble. Detroit threatening and trying to hold on. We're back in the fourth quarter, 8.24 left. 15 to 10 the score, and it's Mike Cummings from Coronel gets the goal to make it 15. Samut was leaving the game when we left him for the last break, and Ted Sawicki came in, and as we thought he might be, Bruce, a little bit cold. He had no chance to warm up. Mike Cummings got the goal, 15 to 10. Now, another penalty, this one to Pat Lee for a nice, clean right chop to the head. Gives it a 5-4 opportunity again for the Saints. The Saints are in the driver's seat right now. There's no question about that. We talked about the power play being a factor, and it really has turned out to be one of the key ones. They're taking advantage of the opportunities, and they're letting Detroit continue to make penalties and put themselves down 5-4. to four. You see how Samut came up with the ball there. He can handle the ball, and he's standing right at about quarter court right now. So he's well out of the goal, and we'll see. You know, he made a tremendous hit that put him in the penalty box, but I guarantee you the New York Saints realize this, and if they get the ball, they're heading for that open net. There it is. It's wide open if he can find it. Here we go. Fast break. McKinty comes down. Smoot back inside now. Smoot had to move. He got settled in good time and made the save. 7-13 left. Fourth quarter. Major upset in the making. 15-10. to The Turbos led in the first period 8-1. to They've only scored two goals since none in the second quarter as the Saints really got their game untracked. The Saints have got about 45 seconds left in that penalty. I'll tell you why Samut came up the floor. Uh, the Turbos were down there. They only had four men. There were five men attacking them. The goalie provides an outlet pass if he's good enough to do it. Samut has the mobility and the stick skills to be able to take that pass, dish it off to somebody. Meanwhile, on the However, far right wing, another shot by Borges. And Samut lets that one go in. And Borges really hot from the right wing. 16 to 10. New York is full of absolute top-notch play. Look at this. Confidence level just rising as every shot goes in. Good outside shot. Borges makes it 16 to 10. We've got six minutes left of the fourth quarter. 
When you travel, stay where the stars of the major indoor lacrosse leagues stay. In Worcester, Mass., the Clarion Suites. In New York, the Long Island Marriott. In Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Airport Hilton Inn. In Baltimore, the Sheridan Inner Harbor Hotel. In Pittsburgh, the Weston William Penn. And in Detroit, the Radisson Pontchartrain. All official hotels of the major indoor lacrosse league. We're back at Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, 16 to 11. New York, that's right, the Saints, two minutes and 54 seconds away from a major upset. Lee Belsmo and Bruce Todman. Four just scored the 16th goal for the New York Saints. Lemon, Brian Lemon scored the 11th goal for the Turbos, but that was on a broken clear. The Turbos have not really had any assemblance of organized offense since 12 minutes into the first quarter. No, they've been on a nap since that point, and I've got to have you know, full marks for the coaching staff, of course, but this goalie tandem has come up real big. Locasio and Pfeiffer just played great. Pfeiffer started off, and uh, he kept applauding his play, even though he was getting schlacked eight to one. It was the defense letting him down, and he did get his game unwrapped, and then the offense really started finding the weaknesses that they had projected Suwaki to have, and they started getting effective shots and goals. 16 to 11, five goal lead with two minutes left, and unbelievably, Detroit looks like they're going to end up in the loss column. Now, these two teams are in opposite divisions, so it wouldn't be as painful for Detroit as somebody in their own division. There's a shot by Terry Martinello, 16 to 12. They're back to within four. I will say this, it's not impossible that they can score four goals in the time left. We're under two minutes, but you can score goals fast, especially with the twin turbos. Well, it's not impossible, but it's fairly improbable. That was another screenshot from well out. Uh, Lacasio really didn't see it. It came through about two or three arms and legs. So Terry Martinello gets goal number 12 for the Turbos, and they are 10 goals off their per-game average tonight. That's amazing, and that just, again, credit to the New York defense. They played a, they played a tremendous game, man-on-man, -man, helping the defense. Terry Martinello right there with the uh, last goal for the Detroit Turbos, who we will see next week against Philadelphia. And this game, if nothing else, gives Philadelphia a whole new perspective. They got spanked last time they were in this arena. Now they're taking the Turbos back to Philadelphia with a whole new perspective on this team, knowing that they can be beat. I can guarantee you the brain trust for the Philadelphia Wings will be on the phone with the coaching staff of the New York Saints finding out exactly what they did. Mito Martinello, on the other hand, he's got a team loaded with offense. Maybe this just wasn't their night. They started off strong, lost their edge, never got back into it. Last weekend, the uh, Philadelphia Wings beat this same New York Saints team 13 to 8. So we'll see what, what team the Wings send to the box next week. You might be seeing some of the same defensive techniques. You may be seeing some of the same types of shots against Sawicki that were successful early in this game. Four goal lead, the New York Saints. I have to tell you, this is one of the most dramatic comebacks in the history of the league, if not the most dramatic. Eight to one, they were down. Here comes Paul Gate. They'll try to stuff it. Slam dunk is denied by Sal Lacasio. That's the way it's been going for him tonight. Pat Lee on the far side. Lee takes a shot. Lacasio again makes the save. Lacasio has come up strong any time he's needed to in the second half. Chris Rebe. Finds the far side. That's Paulgate. Paulgate stuffs one home. 16-13. One minute left. Well, you better not tell the fat lady to warm up yet. Uh, crazier things have happened than three goals in one minute, that's for sure. Well, this, the next faceoff will be critical. Gary Gate is down there for the faceoff. And Borges will be facing off for the New York squad. This is the critical faceoff. If they can get the ball here, stuff one in to 16-14, and you've got a real chance to score two goals. A good look at Paul Gay, who is leading this league in goals in his first year. Well, the impressive thing to me, Leaf, is that these Saints played a tough, tough game against uh, the Pittsburgh Bulls last night and have come back one night later and gunned it. You're so right, and I, and I forgot about that. Purdy comes in. We talked to him at halftime. And Purdy just dunks one in past Samut. That'll be the icing on the cake. Just when there was a glimmer of hope for the Turbos, Purdy, the Australian flash, comes down there and stuffs home the 17th goal, a four-goal lead, and that about does it. You got to like the agility of this uh, down-under little guy. 
Makes a good fake to the short side. Takes the stick on top of his head and throws it to the far corner. He had Samut right out of the net by that time. Purdy, three goals last night. And I think he's got three goals tonight, unofficially according to my statistics. Far side, another save by Lacasio. The gate's trying to get this thing a little closer. Here's another fast break on Samut. It's two on one. They'll feed it over. Nobody in the goal. Samut was up. He was pulled. It was a six on five because Samut was out of the goal. So that is just an open net goal. Makes it number 18. And a lot of satisfaction on the New York bench and a stunned Detroit Turbo team now knows that they can't take all their great talent for granted. It was an open net goal. As you said, Samut had come out for the extra attacker trying to force the Saints, but uh, the tough defense of the Saints took the ball off them and ended up with a, an empty netter. And that tough defense was Sal Acasio. Boy, has he filled that net in the second half. I guess. John Reese gets the face off behind the back pass to Nicholas, and they are just ramming home a lot of icing on the cake type shots. They're That's, having some fun now. They really are. 19 right there. There's some people not having so much fun. Unbelievable to think back. And again, this team, as we look at Samut, who came in midway through, or let's say six minutes oh, into the third the period, the Nicholas gets Nicholas another goal. But this Nicholas team from New York was down 8-1 to one at 12.35 into the first period. Beautiful over-the-shoulder pass. Jeff Nicholas finishing it off. <laughs> So this is all academic at this point. New York Saints with a major upset, 19 to 13. Figure that out. They outscored Detroit 18 to 5. 18 to 5 at that point. Well, we Seven knew. Uh, excuse me, Leaf. We knew going into this the kind of defense that the Saints had. What they lacked was offense. They've proven tonight that they can put the ball in the net. That's really one of the problems that every team has had facing Detroit. They focus so much on stopping the gates, they forget that they've got to score about 15 goals if they're going to win the thing. And That's New right. York just didn't get out of their game plan. They knew what they could do with the players they had. They had a good, solid defensive scheme, but more importantly, they had an excellent offensive scheme. Power play now. Four seconds left. This will be it. 19 to 13 is going to be your final, and that's it. 19 to 13. The New York Saints with the biggest upset of the 1991 season. We'll be back and talk to our Coors Light MVP. Stay with us.